Hello, I'm really looking forward to our interview today and we are going to talk about legal cultures. So you promised me to tell me some parts and give me some information about legal cultures. So what are legal cultures in general? Well, Erika, um, I'm happy to talk to you about legal cultures. Cultures is a term that we use so often in connection to a group, in society, to languages. But it's not so familiar to talk about legal cultures. If um, you look at legal cultures, it's first of all the way how law is created. Mm. Is it created by a democratically elected government mm -hmm. or by a dictator? We have experiences of both. Um, and the legal culture is also very strongly shaped on how the law is enforced. Uh, in some countries we have a well-functioning system with courts that uh, fairly and uh, correctly enforce the law. However, there are also some countries where the law enforcement is not working properly. Mm -hmm. That also is a strong component of the legal culture of a country, such as also how the police is acting. Yeah? So this is basically what I would understand under the term legal culture. Okay. So why do countries have legal cultures at first? Is it just history? It's mainly history, absolutely, uh -huh. right. So there are many, many factors that influence uh, the legal cultures of a country. Um, I would like to give you two examples. Okay. One of them is the example of continental Europe, like Austria, for instance. Yeah? Uh -huh. um, about 2,000 years ago, we've had a big, huge empire, the Roman Empire, where the emperor was setting the law, like the Twelve Tables, they are quite known. And then um, there were deputies of the uh, emperor, like judges, judices, as they called them at that time, who were applying the law. But that was a very limited power that the, the judex, the judge, had. But it was a very well-structured and a very organized way of a legal system. 2,000 years back. Mm. But then, after the Roman Empire collapsed, it got lost. And then what's quite fascinating, um, about uh, in the 11th or 12th century, some monks in monasteries rediscovered Roman law. And then that was like the renaissance of Roman law in continental Europe. And today, even like um, in the codes of contract law in Germany, in France, in Italy, in Austria, in many continental European countries, you see a very strong influence of the ancient Roman law. So that's one example of this. We call it the civil law tradition in mm -hmm. continental Europe. The second example is quite different. That takes place in England, um, where um, the king, in the, like, again, the 11th or 12th century, was sending out his um, like noblemen to rule on disputes, because in the villages there were many disputes, often on a piece of land and issues like that. And the king would send his uh, noblemen to make a decision, to make a judgment. And these judgments were then reported. And this was the start of a legal tradition that is based on case law. You can see that like a puzzle, where little pieces gradually come together and form a consistent picture. And this is also the doctrine of um, stare decisis, where precedent cases are binding for later similar cases. We call it the common law tradition. Yeah? And so you see that the legal culture is strongly influenced by the history. And then when um, European countries were having colonies uh, worldwide, they also transported their, their legal culture to other continents like the civil law tradition that we have in Austria or in Spain has also been transported to Latin America and the common law tradition from the UK has been transported to North America, to Australia, New Zealand, India. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So this is also how globally um, the legal cultures have been somehow evolving. Okay, that's quite interesting. But now, but now we're in the 21st century. And the world has gotten so much smaller in ways of communication, it's, it's getting so very fast and um, companies are working multinational. And what do you think is, was the, the major impact of globalization on legal cultures or when it comes to the topic of legal cultures? 
All right, I think uh, on the one hand, there has been a strong influence of international organizations, such as the World Trade Organization, the International Labour Organization, all these international uh, intergovernmental organizations, which have standardized some laws. So, for instance, China or India or Russia are today member states of the World Trade Organization. That's why they have had to change their national laws to bring them in line, more or less, mm. with international standards. Then we have the multinational companies, which you have also already mentioned, which also tried to um, save costs by also again achieving a common international standard. But it's limited, of course, because the law is also always reflecting the values in society. And we know that in some countries we have the law in the books, on paper, but then we also have the law in reality. Yeah? And if the law in reality, the way how it's enforced, I'm coming back to what I told you earlier about enforcement of the law, uh, even um, today we have a very big diversity in the legal cultures worldwide. Okay, so we heard now legal cultures of a country are like, it's important to know what is the history of a country to understand why is legal culture the way it is. And the next major point you said is that the law in the books is not always the law in reality. So I think we heard quite a lot of important information and I'm really thankful for this interview and yeah, thank you. I thank you very much. <laughs>